hello 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 and welcome or welcome back i am so excited to be here back with you guys because we are finally ranking the anthology the second half of the tortured poets department album by our girly and savior miss taylor swift we have already ranked the standard edition we are now good to rank the anthology because we have gone through and analyzed all of the songs line by line lyric by lyric if you would like to check that out we have done it for the anthology and the standard version so feel free to check those out if you want to see any thoughts about any particular lines or moments in songs um trust me we probably went over it and if i missed something that you're particularly into in one of those videos for one of your favorite songs let me know um or let me know if there are other swifty um or pop girly things that you would like me to lyrically analyze because i absolutely love doing it but I've been waiting to do this video and kind of like thinking on this video since the album came out um, because I've been listening to the song since the album came out and like forming opinions of them. So we are going to be adding the anthology songs to the ranking that we already have for the Tortured Poets Department Standard Edition. So before we get into it, we are just going to review the tiers that we have set. So starting at the bottom, we have the Unneeded For Me Thank You tier. Um, this is for songs that are just not necessary as a part of the album or the canon to me they didn't really do anything to me i personally would be the same if they did not exist not very many of those don't worry up from that we have the i can appreciate why you are here tier it may not be like my vibe it may not like grab me or like catch my attention in a specific sparkly way but i can definitely understand how it adds to the album how it adds to the taylor swift discography how it adds to the canon how it adds to the taylor i can understand why it's present and i can appreciate it for that reason bumping up from there we have the on repeat tier these are simply the songs that i have on repeat these are the ones that i am spinning these are the ones that i am getting in my car or pulling up my phone and i am pressing play on as the first jam of our drive or a dog walk etc these are kind of my personal little darlings and then above that rising to the very top we have the taylor swift classics tier now this tier is reserved for songs that i believe have contributed to the Taylor Swift canon in a memorable way such that they will be the songs that we remember and that stand out from this album as quintessential Taylor Swift songs from this era. Um, some examples that we already have up there, LOML, But Daddy I Love Him, songs that are so quintessentially Taylor Swift and are essential to the canon or the lore in some way. Um, they also go really, really fucking hard. So without further ado, let's just get into it. We have some real interesting specimens to talk about here and um, some of them are some of my favorites. So. If you will recall, this is where we left off. If this is shocking to you or there's anything here that you're like, how did we get there? Um, feel free to watch the first part of this video where we ranked the standard edition. I really don't have any qualms with this. This is still pretty much where we are. I guess the only things that I would shift, I have, you'll be happy to know, had my um, chillin' vibin' kind of sunset twilight chill driving moment with Fresh Out the Slammer and I did have a good moment with that like another summer taking cover um, piece that everyone seems to really like have hit with them. I did get it, I did hear it, I did feel it. Um, and so for that reason, I would actually probably do this and then I would actually also do that because, well, I don't want this to be last because that makes me sad. I like this song. Yeah, I think that's what we would do. We would do this here um, just because I've had, had a little bit of a moment with it. It's played a few times and I've let it play um, just because I wanted to hear its defenders out. Um, and the thing is, is it doesn't even really like bother me. I just feel like I've heard it before. Um, I don't even think it's bad. I just kind of doesn't, hit with me in any special way in particular. I've had a few times with it where it has hit and I have had a good time with it um, and I have understood. So for that reason, I think I would scooch it up um, just a little bit. It doesn't feel right to have this last though and I've never had any negative feelings about it and I have had negative feelings about these two in some way. This one to me, it's just, I don't have any huge feelings positively or negatively. It's like, the positive feelings are just positive. They're not like jumping in any way. Um, and like my positive feelings for all of the ones above this line 
are jumping in some way. I don't know why I'm using that verb to describe how I feel, um, but you know what I mean, you know what I mean? Um, so if we start at the beginning of the anthology, we have to start by taking the black dog and putting it all the way up in Taylor Swift classics because it's earned that spot. Everyone so immediately <laughs> recognized that the black dog is a Taylor Swift classic. It's so like out of pocket a little bit because like, I feel like no one really had like a clear picture of what the black dog was going to be about for sure. But then when we all heard it, we were like this, this is the song. For no reason other than I feel like the way it builds and the emotionality of it just is so raw and I think cuts through to a place that we've all been in, in a breakup, grieving a relationship and grieving someone separating from us and grieving someone moving their boxes out of a relationship and just being in that pain and lashing out because of that pain and in that pain and then kind of rising up out of that anger into a little bit of healing. Um, I talk about it ad nauseum um, in my analysis of this song, but I just feel like there is a catharsis in going through the breakdowns and the grief and the pain of this song and coming up the other side and saying, I hope it is fucking shitty in the black dog. And I hope you feel every piece of me that dies when I'm trying to figure out how to exercise the demons that your ass wove into my soul. Um, I just, I love, love, love that and I think that Taylor Swift really brings raw emotionality and just real relatable feelings into her songs so well in a way that is so specific that it becomes universal. There are specific feelings and moments and paradigm shifts that I think a lot of people experience within certain circumstances within their lives. And Taylor really does a great job of bringing language to those and putting them in her songs. And I think the process and the catharsis that you go through throughout the breakdowns that you have in the course of your healing after a breakup is really, really, really well represented in The Black Dog. And it just feels so achingly amazing to experience with Taylor when you listen to that song. And that is what reminds me of why I loved her so much during my early years of loving her, during Fearless, during her debut era, during Speak Now. It was what I loved then, and it's one of the many things I love now, and it's just done so powerfully in this song. I'm gonna get you back. I really, really, really liked in the early weeks of listening to this album, and I feel like it was kind of a sleeper hit for everybody else. Like, it's kind of just growing on everyone else now. Um, and I'm actually not getting tired of it, but starting to go into a new phase of listening to songs and so I would definitely say it's either on repeat or will return to. I think it's probably right about here in will return to because I definitely will continue listening to it but I feel like my time of putting it on repeat has probably Past. I put it on repeat in the first like two weeks the album was out a lot um, because I was really attracted to like I felt like it should be on the first half of the album. I just felt like the pacing and the production really fit in with the first half of the album but I get like it was kind of hard like with like the timeline and stuff of the first half like to figure out where to put it and so I get why it was included here. I think if this had been like a smaller project and like the anthology of it all like stretching out 31 tracks hadn't been the thing they did this would have been one of the bonus tracks or the vault tracks to this album easily um and I really love some of the TikToks I've seen people make to it I really like it I think I just maybe have kind of I don't know like played through my on repeat phase for it but I love how it kind of has like this like double chorus I see the whispers in your eyes that slower part but then the also like I'm gonna get you back part of the chorus that's a little bit faster I love the balance of that I love the like hard beats in the production the like what gonna smash up your bike? I don't haven't decided yet. I love that. Um, yeah, big fan. I well, I'm talking myself into putting it higher now. Well, because mm, I definitely will return to it. Yeah, maybe we should have it in the on repeat tier. That one's getting really full though. Uh, okay, we're gonna put this down here, and I think we're actually gonna move Florida down too because 
I feel like my on repeat phase of that has also kind of faded. Um, but my on repeat phase for all of these has definitely not. So, oh God, um, I'm getting nervous about how this is gonna look at the end. Okay, the Albatross. I had no idea it was an unpopular opinion to like this song. Um, I like all of the like metaphors within the metaphor of this song. I think it's so clever. Go watch my analysis of it. I think it's clever. I think the production really clicks in with the lyrics to create this very ever lower folk more vibe. I feel like she's telling me this story around a campfire and I definitely will continue returning to it. I think my on repeat phase is again, probably over, but I definitely will continue to listen to it um and i definitely have continued to listen to it it was in again the first two weeks of the album one of the ones that i would click on and put on first i would definitely put on the black dog i'm gonna get you back the albatross guilty as sin but daddy i love him smallest man like there who's afraid of little old me down bad um the alchemy those were all ones that i would like press first um and for the most part a lot of those i still do but not all of them. I'm definitely pressing Clara Bow first um, a lot more. I'm definitely pressing Fortnite um, first a lot more um, just because it's very chill and easy to listen to and that end is really, really growing on me. Um, the like, I mean, I loved it at first when I first heard it, I was obsessed. Chloe or Sam or Sophia or Marcus. This is another one that I've actually been listening to a lot more just because I find it easy to listen to and it just kind of goes and goes and goes and doesn't ask much of you. It just kind of is happy to um, relay to you this little story, this little therapy session and then be on its way. And for that reason, I do think I will return to it, but definitely not more than I'm gonna get you back for the albatross. Uh, I'm like wanting to organize this, but I'll do it. I'll do it later, I promise. How did it end? I, I had a growing appreciation for in analyzing it and I never would have said it's unneeded. I'm not sure I will return to it. Um, just because the activity of listening to it isn't something that I particularly have fun with, but I really appreciate the poem of it and the message of it. And I do think that it illuminates some things on the timeline and like kind of the storyline and the story behind this album. So I can definitely appreciate why it's here. And I do think I would put it behind all of those ones on the standard edition. So high school, again, my appreciation for this has grown since I kind of, I wouldn't say fully slandered it in my unpopular Tortured Poets era opinions video, but I definitely, I, I said that I would have rather had a different song in its place on tour. I don't necessarily feel that way now. I think it's a fun, cute set to watch. I love all of the references and stuff and like Travis watching and like the fact that she did it as a surprise song when his family was there. Very cute, very sweet. It clearly means something to her and she's clearly very in love and very happy and very excited to perform it when she does. And like definitely, and they definitely had a lot of fun like choreographing it. Um, I do really like listening to it now. That has kind of like made me a little bit more giddy and happy about it. I didn't dislike it. Don't get me wrong um but i was just never like a stan of it i guess in compared to how some people are and so because i wasn't a huge stan i felt like oh like do i not like this song like am i not feeling how i'm supposed to and like i do i like it it's fun and it's sweet and i definitely will be returning to it um probably right about there i hate it here i <laughs> She said with joy. Um, I really appreciate I hate it here. It kind of reminds me that I hate it here sometimes. Um, and so I don't necessarily listen to it on repeat or a lot. Um, and I'm not sure how much I will return to it, but it's definitely like, it's a comfort to me that it exists and I enjoy it. And so maybe I would put it probably like right here. Oh dear. Did we need, do we need another tier? I don't feel like, I don't feel like we need another tier. These ones are going to be in different categories though. Thank you, Amy is in, I can appreciate where you hear. I do not re-listen to this a lot. When it comes on, I let it play, but I don't particularly seek it out. I guess it's just like, it's in a family of songs that I actually tend to really like. And it's not even that I dislike it or think it's bad. It just kind of doesn't do a ton for me. Um, it's just sort of like fine and cute. Um, and so for that reason, 
that is where it's going to go. I look in people's windows on repeat. I am obsessed with it. It is going straight to the top of on repeat. Yes, above Guilty as Sin. Yes, above The Alchemy. Yes, above Who's Afraid of Little Old Me. Yes, above Down Bad. And I'm not sorry. I am a I look in people's windows stand. I pledge allegiance to I look in people's windows at this point. That song is just so haunting and lovely and wonderful and I would be absolutely worse if it were not in this world. <laughs> the mysterious element of it, because she's not particularly straightforward telling you why any of this is happening, but it is all kind of this very like shady, sneaky, like avoidant behavior. And there are so many questions unanswered, but then just in the way she describes things happen, you kind of sort of start to get an idea of why this might happen. And also how it's sort of a metaphor, like you can picture her her walking around in the cold, looking through people's windows to the warmth inside and the glow coming out at her. And like, you can see the light on her face and her like hoping to lock eyes with someone in inside. There's so much imagery that is just pulled so wonderfully from these simple words and this really unique instrumentation and plucking. And the atmosphere that it creates is so like, it feels like, there is a feather drifting out in the cold in the wind and that is Taylor and she's searching for like the thing that she lost. Like she is Horton looking for the speck in the clover field, just aimlessly searching, hoping that she sees this random person in a sea of millions, um, hoping against hope because she's hoping that that's what the prophecy has in store is for them to lock eyes one more time and for one thing to be different this time. Like it's just all so fate fueled and it kind of has a dark cast over it. And we know I love things that have just like a little bit of a dark tinge to them. There are so many tiny Taylor Swift things in this song, the anxiety, the wondering, the ruminating, the fate, the endless love, the invisible string of reconnecting with someone, the kind of like lurking, sort of like stalking, um, watching and like remembering mastermind vibe of like always keeping tabs, always having a file on everything that ever happened in your mind, um, forgiving but never forgetting or doing neither and pressing on anyway. This song is so Taylor Swift in so many different little ways. And for that reason, I think that's why it draws so many of us in and is so addicting is because it has little sprinkles of so many things that we as Swifties just absolutely yearn for and love. Um, not to mention the yearning. Oh, we love yearning um, and so does Tay. And she she yearns so good um, in this song and a couple others that I really love. Um, speaking of which, The Prophecy, a Taylor Swift classic. Um, and I'll tell you why, even if you do not listen to it constantly, I definitely, I've grown into listening to The Prophecy fairly consistently, especially after analyzing it. And this like, but daddy, I love him, like Clara Bow, like LOML, like even I look in people's windows is just rife with Taylor swiftness. Um, this is the return of the invisible string, the idea of fate, the idea of things being prophesied, the idea of her and her life already being laid out, but also the things that switch and change having to do with her choices and essentially karma and thinking back and wondering what in the master plan did I do to switch to end up desolate like this? Will I always be wandering, looking in people's windows because of a choice that I made because of some Thing that was meant to be because this is how the universe has balanced out. But it's also so incredibly So Cassandra's interesting because I am really, really addicted to certain little parts of it, but it's actually kind of a long and a little bit repetitive song. And so I don't 
particularly let it play all that often. I let it play in the background if I just kind of have music playing or I'm on a really long drive or I'm listening to the album all the way through. Rarely do I go and seek it out. Um, I do like it though and so it's definitely and I can appreciate why you're here song but I think it's probably at the top because I do return to it more than any of the other ones on this level because I just really do like the the verses I'm obsessed with. The chorus I like, but the verses I am so deeply into that I listen to the song just for them, even though the song is like mostly chorus. Peter, I really deeply appreciate. I pretty much never listen to, though I'm gonna be so honest with you guys. I pretty much never put it on. I think maybe around oddly like Christmas time, <laughs> um, I might end up listening to it more. I'm not sure what that is, but that's just the feeling I get. Um, but I definitely, definitely, definitely appreciate why it's here. Again, watch my analysis if you wanna know why. Peter is just so layered and there's just so much juice um, there, there's so much lore there and it really makes clear and solidifies, I think more than any other song, how like the different threads of the central relationship in this album weave throughout so many of her poems um, that this was swirled into. It's just so clear and so consistent. Um, and she ties it in here in Peter in several ways, not to mention the things and the metaphors that start here um, and that can kind of, you see that were brought out to other songs and that this was maybe kind of the starting point for certain other metaphors that had to do with this relationship. Um, and so for that reason, I can definitely appreciate why Peter is here. Do not really listen to it that much. Probably would end up putting it right there. I've really gotten sick of the Tortured Poets Department song. <laughs> um, I, I really, I never liked it like that much. It was just kind of like the title song. And so I feel like my appreciation for it as the title song has just completely flopped and faded. Um, and I pretty much never listen to it now. And My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys, I never ever listened to before. And I'm just like slowly kind of giving it a chance every now and then um, and like sort of enjoying it. And so it's just, it's crept up a little bit. But I do feel like these are more lived in rankings than my first one. I wouldn't say anything's like drastically changed, it's just these are more solidified and probably longer lasting. The Bolter, I love the Bolter. The Bolter is on repeat. I am part of Club Bolter. I like the Bolter just as much as Fortnite and just as much as Who's Afraid of Little of Me and Down Bad, I listen to it just as much or more. I love everything about the Bolter. I love the like story and the message of it and kind of the question of like, is the fact that like the relief of being free and leaving to find something different and better and something that could fit me more. And like the idea of that feeling like life and death at the same time, like is that what has gotten the prophecy to this point is this why I'm on my knees and why why I can't find my forever love is that why like I love that connection there but I also love the kind of like polite vintagey old-fashioned language that makes it feel like from a time gone by that's just very like cute and I feel like we haven't seen Taylor do or show her kind of like vintage flair um quite as much since the folkmore era and so I love seeing it here I also kind of love the like pattern break of the swear in um, her fucking lives flash before her eyes and she realized it feels fine like the time she fell through the ice and then came out alive. Again, watch my analysis, but like it just breaks the formality and the polite language of the rest of the song um, and like really zooms in on that moment as like the apex and like the most important moment. And like when you think about it, it takes a second, but you get why the like fell through the ice and then came out alive metaphor is there because it's like a shock to your system and like you think you're dead but then you like have this gasp of air and you have hypothermia and you still feel like you're dead but you actually like feel like reborn because you actually like almost died um and like you're still alive and like 
it's just so much and it's so good and I really I really enjoy it and it's a good time to listen to it's upbeat um but it has like a little bit of darkness to it and I just absolutely love that I know you could say the same for thank you Amy thank you Amy doesn't hit me in the same way that's really just like all I have to say the romanticism of this and like the cuteness of it um and like the relationship aspect of it and like the avoidant um attachmentness of this I just find relatable and cute um and I bond with and like um more than thank you Amy personally. Robin, the one occupant of the unneeded for me thank you category. I just think that she should have given this song to Aaron or Robin. I do not think it needed to be on her album. If you are a parent, I get you probably feel differently. I am not a parent and so I I think this song is fine. I am not affected by it particularly. I like Never Grow Up a lot more. I feel like it takes a lot more work to understand and get on board with the metaphor in this song than I would like it to for a song that's this short. This song just feels a little empty to me um, sonically. It just feels really empty. The way to go tiger and higher and higher thing I get it's supposed to feel like soaring and like you're just like sitting there happily watching a kid and it's supposed to just feel like something that would play during a montage of happy childhood memories. I get that. Doesn't do much for me personally. And like the things that I'm saying about that, it I've had to like get there. <laughs> I've had to like listen to it again and again and like analyze it to get there. I understand it intellectually, emotionally, it doesn't hit me in that way. Um, and things about childhood and growing up, they definitely do. This one doesn't personally. I made a joke about it on TikTok and I got a lot of moms saying that they really like it. Um, I don't personally feel that way, but if you do, I understand. Like intellectually based on the lyrics and having heard the song, I get why you would feel that way and I support it. I personally don't. I didn't think it needed to be on the record. Love that she wrote it. Love that it was a gift. Think it's very sweet. Think that's awesome for them. Don't know if we all needed to hear it. It's fine. Um, the manuscript. I can appreciate why it's here and it's important that it is probably never gonna listen to it and I feel like I'm not the only one. It is such an important Taylor Swift message and like really ties up and puts a great period um, on the album and like closes the back cover really well. I don't think I need to hear it all that much and like I'm afraid that's how some people feel about Dear Reader. I love Dear Reader. I will listen to Dear Reader. Dear Reader is I feel like I'm having a meditation session with mother and she's imparting wisdom to me and I'm just like hearing a prayer. Um, when I listen to Dear Reader, the manuscript sounds like something that would play during the credits. Um, it's just not as engaging as Dear Reader. It kind of just floats and I like hear it in the background. Dear Reader to me has a little bit more of a push forward to it um, that this doesn't and so sometimes I'll let it play and sometimes I'll be like no this is gonna make me too sleepy we need to skip it and so I can definitely appreciate why it's there and so for that reason I think I'm probably gonna put it ooh, like right here and not even because I listen to it more than some of these but because it's importance I feel like just pushes it up to where it can't be <laughs> It can't be any lower than this. And that's just what I've decided. Okay, how do we feel about this? Do we wanna reorganize anything? Let's see. Okay, I think that's where we're gonna be. Um, I moved Fortnite up solely because every single time it comes on, I do just let it play. I have skipped Guilty as Sin a couple times. I don't know why, I don't know why I have. I think I might have, I think I might have OD'd on it just a little bit. I think I might have overdone it on that one in the alchemy. Um, just, just a wee bit, just a wee bit. Um, same with Down Bad. And I feel like I've watched the Who's Afraid of Little Old Me tour performance so much that like I look in people's windows, the Bolter and Fortnite are really just like my songs as of late. And so I feel like those are probably the ones that deserve to be on the top. Um, I've never gotten tired of a daddy, I love him. Yeah, never really gotten tired of any of these ones. Yeah, no, I think this is, this is where we are. So let me know 
how infuriated you are or what you agree with. This is always hard because like ranking is so, do you, you have to kind of like look at how they fit into the canon as well as like your own opinions. And so that's why I have like the Taylor Swift classics tier to kind of like balance that out a little bit with songs like The Prophecy and LML that I'm not like, and even like Smallest Man that I'm not like listening to every day, but like carry the weight in my heart, like are heart handing in my heart because they're important. Whew, all right, we did it, we did it again. I actually had a much easier time with that than I thought I was going to. And I feel like this is a pretty accurate reflection of my feelings and my thoughts about the Tortured Poets songs after everything has kind of settled in. Um, it was interesting how you talked about, there were some songs that I like really, really, really was attracted to and went really hard on in like the first two weeks of the album release. But then things have kind of like leveled out and balanced out um, with those since then. So I don't know. I I always find it really interesting hearing what people initially think and then how things kind of simmer out a few like weeks or months after they've like lived with the album what actually kind of like rises to the top and what like they're attracted to and so I find that really interesting in rankings let me know what those songs were for you guys and what your thoughts are on my thoughts and my ranking of this album I feel like people have very differing opinions about the songs on this album and everyone kind of has their like one or two tracks that they will just go to bat for um and for me I feel like those are the bolter and I look in people's windows I will defend those songs till the end of the year and I definitely feel like not everyone feels the same way but let me know if you do and what those songs are for you off of this album once again thank you thank you so 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 very much for being here it means the absolute world to me that you would click on my little video and watch all the way to the end so thank you thank you thank you for doing that it makes a huge difference what also makes a huge difference is if you did like this video and you made it this far you probably liked it i'm guessing i'm hoping let me know by clicking the little like button it makes my heart soar and glow every single time i see one of those little likes i do see them and they make me so happy subscribe if you would like to see more videos we have some more thrifted fashion content like coming um now that like we've gotten through the behemoth that is TTPD and analyzing and ranking it. Um, I'm going to show you guys what I've been wearing this summer and figuring out how to sweat in and still look cute as well as prepping my outfit for the Ares tour. So we've got a lot coming out for you guys in the next few weeks. I'm so excited. I will be going to one of the Ares tour shows in the second round in London. So you'll be hearing about that as well. I am sure this outro is getting too long. Thank you for being here. It means the world and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Oh, follow me on TikTok too. I'm posting every single day on there and I know I only post every like week or so here. So if you'd like to see more content of the same ilk that you see here, same vibe, um, check it out. I have it linked below. I will see you in the next one and I cannot wait. Mwah.